They call me Cruise Man. I've put more than 150,000 miles on Honda Goldwings, riding all over this amazing country. Thousands of Goldwing owners have used my videos to guide them when working on their own bikes or considering which aftermarket products to purchase. I love riding and wrenching. These are my motor vlogs. Hey everybody, this is Cruise Man here today at Dream Machines of Texas, one of the largest, if not the largest, used motorcycle dealer in the state. And I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to take a test ride, kind of an evaluation ride on this uh, 2016 Can-Am Spider F3 that they actually have for sale here. And um, let's go see what this three-wheeler is really like. Okay, let's see if I can even get this thing started. Uh, there's several things you have to do first. You have to make sure the parking brake is on, which is over here. First, let's turn it on. So you have to make sure the parking brake is on, which I think it is. And then you have to make sure you got your start switch in the right position. And then after this Can-Am screen comes up, you have to hit the mode button. And let's see, now it should start. It is in neutral. Okay. Kind of an interesting sound. Now I've never ridden one of these Can-Am Spiders, so I have no idea what to expect. This is a 2016 F3. It's got 12,500 miles on it. I think they're selling it for about 17,000, which sounds like a pretty good price to me. I've only ridden one other three-wheeler, and that was a Goldwing trike, actually at Dream Machines just about, uh, oh, I guess a month or two ago when I was doing another windshield installation video. So I'm just going to ride this thing around the parking lot just to get used to it. I think you put it in gear over here, you shift, kind of like the Goldwing does with the DCT transmission. This has an automatic transmission, but I think you have to shift it. There's no clutch but you do have to shift. I don't think it will shift automatically. So let's put it in gear. How do you do that? Maybe you have to put on the brake. Yep, you have to put on the foot brake. The only brake on the bike is this foot brake. There's no hand brake. So that's gonna take a little getting used to. So I may be riding the brake for a while. So let's give it a little power and see how this thing handles. Uh-oh, maybe I have my parking brake on. There we go. Okay, so let's go. So it was beeping at me because I had my parking brake on. Oh, it actually actually turns pretty easy. I'm surprised. I expected it to be kind of heavy and hard to turn, but it actually steers pretty light uh, just at low speed, which is nice. Now, I'm not going to do anything crazy starting out. I'm just going to ride around this parking lot for a second and get a feel for this thing, just in first gear because um, it's a different feel and trikes have a whole different uh, set of dynamics because when you turn uh, it wants to kind of throw your body in the opposite direction because it doesn't lean so I'm just trying to get used to it I'm going to go out here on one of these little streets make sure my brakes are working yeah the brakes are pretty good Make sure, make sure I know where my turn signals are. Okay, they're right here. Everything looks pretty, pretty normal as far as where everything's located. So let's get out here on the street and see what happens. It is uh, quite a bit different. I'll wait till I get on the street here to shift. There shouldn't be a lot of traffic on this street. Okay, turning is strange, different. Shifting is pretty responsive. Not quite as responsive as the DCT transmission on the Goldwing. Uh, the width of this thing, uh, it takes a little getting used to because it's very wide. It's almost as wide as a car. So I'm just going 20, 30 miles an hour right now. I'm just gonna go down here a ways and Oh man, this windshield doesn't do anything but throw the wind right into my helmet. So I'm getting a ton of wind in my face. Wow, it, it is pretty responsive on the steering. 
you know, once you get up to some speed, I mean, it, it really wants to turn. One thing I noticed as I was coming to a stop to this stoplight, it does downshift automatically, which is nice. It, so it won't let you stall the engine uh, from that perspective. It seems to have plenty of power. But man, am I getting a ton of wind. I had read some other reviews online with the same complaint that the thing that really needs a bigger windshield. And I'm actually going to try that out a little later. I'm going to put an F4 Customs windshield on here and give it a try and see if I notice a, a difference. I'm going to turn in here. And I'm going to turn around and go back and we'll try that uh, F4 Customs windshield, see if it makes a, any kind of a difference. I'm just going to see how this thing does a U-turn. Now it's got a fairly tight turning radius, I guess. That was pretty, uh, pretty painless. The turning is what takes a getting used to because like I said before, it wants to throw you off in the opposite direction just because of centrifugal force. So I can see how on curvy, twisty roads, uh, some aggressive riding might be challenging. You would be fighting the natural physical forces of nature. Now, I'm not going to downshift. I'll show you as I come to this stoplight, it will start downshifting automatically. Which I think is a pretty cool feature. Now, you can downshift manually using the paddle shifters. See, so now it's in first gear. So it downshifted from third down to first. And uh, when I get up here without any traffic, I'll get on it a little bit just to see how the power is. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. Uh, <clears throat> you don't really have to let off the throttle to shift. So you kind of uh, speed shift, you might say. And it's fairly responsive. The, the turning is just kind of strange. It just takes some getting used to. I mean, it's real touchy once you get going. Of course, you got two tires up there grabbing the road instead of one. We're going to head back in and put a different windshield on and see if it makes a difference with the wind. Okay, now I've mounted the 21 inch F4 Customs windshield to this Can-Am Spider. And I'm going to take it up and down the road here just to see if it makes a difference. It certainly looks more substantial than the factory windshield. Uh, F4 Customs also provides these additional brackets to add additional strength, which is nice. I think I may just have to go right here because there's a train coming and that's never going to turn green. So let's... You know, I'm six foot two, so I'm still getting a little wind in the head. I can see completely over this windshield. I'm going to about 40 miles an hour. And it's, uh, it's certainly better than the factory windshield, but I think for somebody as tall as me, if I want to block more wind, I'm going to have to go to a taller windscreen. Boy, this thing is weird when you go to turn it on a... God, it just feels freaky. So I could hunker down behind the windshield like this and get a lot more protection. See, this is where it gets squirrely. I'm going to take these turns at speed. It just, it's so unintuitive for a motorcycle rider. It's more like an ATV. 
So now as part of my uh, review and uh, of the F3 Custom, I'm trying out this F4 Customs 23 inch windshield. And this is the tinted model and I tell you what, I love it. It blocks a ton more wind than the factory windshield and somebody needs to get down here to Dream Machines and buy this Spider F3 because we're going to leave this 23 inch windshield on this bike. And this is not an inexpensive windshield. You're getting a brand new F4 Customs 23 inch tinted windshield if you buy this Can-Am Spider F3. So I've enjoyed my time on the Spider. I don't know if it's something I'll go to in the future, but I can sure see the appeal of it. Especially for those of you who, for whatever reason, maybe bad knees, bad hip, you can't ride on two wheels. Uh, but even if you can ride on two wheels, maybe you just prefer this type of a ride. It, ride it's, it's like I say, it's more like an ATV than it is a motorcycle because it doesn't lean in the turns. But I see the appeal. It is a very, very different and very interesting ride. This thing has plenty of power. Uh, it probably handles really good in the right hands of somebody that knows how to drive it. I'm just not used to it. So I've enjoyed my time on this Can-Am Spider. I want to thank Dream Machines again. So thanks again for joining us today on Cruise Man's Garage.